Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, some of you always love to mock my monitor stand that we have over here. I don't really know why. It's the perfect diameter, the perfect height, and the biscuits were delicious. But I do listen to you, and today we are going to do something about it. I have a $1,500 stand that we are going to install instead. And yes, it does make some nice noises as well. I'm sorry about that silly ha 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 thing, but I really was having such a blast playing those Mark King riffs on that fabulous slap bass sound. I thought that instrument sounded awesome, but it's not all roses and honey and summer meadows. I do have some serious concerns about using this thing in my production workflow, but we'll get to that in just a minute. First, let's go over to the computer and just so that we're all on the same page, let's check the specs and the features of this so everybody knows what the Integra 7 is. The continuity in my videos really sucks. I did the performance last night and that's why I've got like, different clothes. Integra 7 Supernatural Sound Module. Supernatural then being their marketing term for Roland's latest generation of sound engine. They say it gives musicians a gold mine of the latest supernatural sounds in a 16 part module. Some of the main features then, 6,000 sounds built in, the latest supernatural sounds with behavior modeling technology. I incorrectly said when I was reviewing the Roland FA that it uses pure physical modeling for the piano sounds. Not the case, it's apparently a combination of sampling and physical modeling a sophisticated multi-effects engine, which is pretty par for the course these days. I should mention this synthesizer is actually four or five years old, so it's a bit long in the tooth now. Here's some examples of the supernatural acoustic tones and the benefits that they offer. I'm looking forward to doing some finger drumming on the V-drums. Interesting, you get all of the sounds from the XB5080 plus the 12 expansion packs. And these have been very widely used in recording studios for the last two decades or so for many different film and TV productions. Here is how Roland envisioned that this product might be used. For pro music production, obviously. For television and radio. For music schools. Well, the school that my kid goes to could never afford one of these for museums, art galleries, and planetariums. Mind blown! Talking of price, let's check what this currently costs. Sweetwater was the first store that I found when I Googled for this, and the price there is $14.99.99. But look, you get an eight gigabyte thumb drive with sound libraries, manuals, and updates. Not an advertisement for Sweetwater. Let's address some of the concerns that I have with using this instrument in my workflow. 
The first thing then is the user interface. Obviously this is a rack with a limited amount of panel area, not so many buttons and a smaller screen with text that I find quite hard to read in some situations. And yet, yeah, just doing the level 42 track we heard earlier was a bit of a pain. Just setting the mix, choosing the sounds, adjusting the effects, a lot of menu diving and you find yourself clicking around using cursor keys and then incrementing, decrementing dials. However, there are some workarounds, so I think we can solve this issue. There are three editors that I know of. There's the Roland official iPad editor, which I don't want to use because I'm not a big fan of using any iPads for serious music production. We can discuss that perhaps in another video, but it boils down to the fact that my son is often using it to play Clash of Clans. And furthermore, I have very serious doubts about the availability of iPads and that the software will still work in five or 10 years time when you're still trying to use this instrument. So I'm a little bit reluctant to use any iPad software to control my high-end synthesizers. The other options, there's an official Roland VST editor that I haven't checked out yet, but I think we should. And there's also a third party editor and I've read some stuff on the forums and everybody suggests that I should use this because people say once you install and use this editor you never have to touch or use the front panel of the Integra again. So the other concern I have, I haven't really figured out a workaround yet and it's this. If you were to do a multi-track composition, say 10 tracks with various instruments and drums on the Integra, then how do I integrate that with my DAW? You see, in the DAW, we're used to putting an instrument plugin on every single track, and then you can add whichever third party effects you like to the track and do all your mixing within the DAW. I've, 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 left, I've left out and lots of... This does have audio over USB, but only two tracks. It's a stereo mix, which is a huge shame. If it was multi-track audio over USB, that would have effectively solved the problem for me. And I see that the Roland Boutique drum machines do have multi-channel audio over USB, so it's a real shame that it's not on this, which is their high-end flagship instrument. I have installed the Roland driver that gives you audio over USB and MIDI over USB. Whilst the MIDI seems to be working okay, the audio doesn't, it doesn't show up as a input and output in Reaper. So I actually had to crawl underneath the desk and plug in some audio cables to the back of the PC and run them into the audio outputs of the Integra. So I think the angle we'll take for this series of reviews and demos is how do we integrate the Integra with a DAW environment as seamlessly as possible? Can it compete with software plugins? And I really would love to make it work because this thing, it's an invaluable resource to have so many fabulous sounds at your disposal in one pretty compact rack unit. So I guess that's it for today. I would love to hear feedback from other Integra users if you have any solutions or workarounds to my concerns. Note to self, maybe I should put Roland Integra 7 in the video title so that interested people can actually find this video. So thank you for checking out this video. I'll see you again in another episode soon. Cheerio. Ha ha ha!